Hey you guys, it's Corey. Thanks for watching. Today we're doing yoga for people who sit at a desk all day. So like I said in my last video, I was traveling quite a bit at the end of last year. And one of the very few downsides of that was that I normally don't watch a lot of TV, but on those 16 hour plane rides and 12 hour train rides, I was watching a lot of TV that I had downloaded and I actually became addicted to the show Mad Men. If you haven't seen Mad Men, check it out. It's a great show. I'll try not to give away any spoilers. But one of my qualms with this show is that there's the main dude, Don Draper, who's this advertising executive in New York City. He like sits at a desk all day, goes to meetings all day, smokes a lot, drinks a lot, eats out at restaurants every night. He's just a generally very attractive but unhealthy guy. And there's one point in the show where he goes out to California and he does yoga for what we can assume is his first time. And he just casually pops into a half lotus pose. If you don't know what half lotus pose looks like, here it is. And he's just sitting up, really straight spine, calmly and peacefully enjoying his half lotus. And Mad Men Riders, I just don't believe it because if you've ever done half lotus and you don't have open knees or open hips, you know it's not a pose that you just jump into after 10 years of sitting like we do in our culture and working in an office all day. So that's my only complaint, but he does drink a lot of whiskey and get laid a lot. So if you're using that method of improving flexibility and having success with it, Drop us a note in the comments and let us know. We would love to hear your ways. If you're not as limber as Don Draper is, we'll give you some exercises today that'll hopefully help you loosen up after the workday. We'll get started down on our backs. So make your way down onto your mat. We'll either start in a Shavasana or Supta Baddha Konasana with the bottoms of your feet together and your knees out wide or a constructive rest where you take your feet to the edges of your mat and let your knees knock in together. So choose one of those that works for you. We'll bring our eyes to close. We'll start to settle into the breath. You can start by driving your inhales through your nostrils and letting them slide out in between your lips. Eventually you'll want to come to breathing in through your nose and out through your nose. And as you breathe in, feel your ribs expand in all four directions. As you breathe out, releasing all the breath, finding somewhere on your body where you can grow a little bit softer. And let yourself fill all the way up on your inhales. Completely empty as you exhale. We'll stay here for five more rounds of breath, starting to listen to your own body's rhythm, and it's taking note of how your physical body's doing today, along with your emotions and how your mind is working at this moment. When you get to the bottom of your fifth breath, let the eyes open. Use your hands if you're in Supta Baddha Konasana and gather your knees up into your chest. And give them a nice squeeze in, lengthening the tailbone down towards the mat. And we'll bring the hands to the tops of the knees. We'll start to draw them apart from each other 
and pull them back in towards your chest, almost like you're rowing a boat with your knees. Moving the hip around, starting to loosen up into the hips. We'll take a few times in this direction and then we'll switch it up to go the other way. Really paying attention to the way the ball is moving around in its socket. And giving some extra attention in any areas that feel tight or just a little bit sticky. And then we'll hug the knees back into the chest. Give them a nice squeeze. We'll lengthen the legs down towards the bottom of your mat and stretch your fingers up overhead. Nice full body stretch. And we'll start to walk the fingers, both sets, over to the right side. We'll bring the right leg out to the right and either bring the left leg over to meet it or cross left ankle over right. And we'll give a nice stretch into the left side of your body. Just gently tugging on your left fingers with your right hand. And breathing into the left side of your ribs, creating a little bit of extra space there. And then we'll come back through center. And we'll start to walk our fingertips over to the left side. We'll bring the left leg out to the left. Right leg comes to meet it or crosses over. And you want to have your shoulders and your hips still grounded down on the mat. And we'll give a gentle tug over to the left. Now we're stretching into the right side. And still breathing down into your belly, letting it grow wide and full. And we'll come back through center. One more time, stretch the fingers and the toes as far apart as you can. And we'll hug the knees back on into the chest. We'll make our way to a tabletop position, either rocking your way to get there or rolling over onto your side. And we'll meet on all fours. We'll come to a few wrist stretches here in our tabletop. So first set your shoulders right over your wrists and we'll just start to take the shoulders in circles, loosening up into the wrists. And switching it up to move in the opposite direction. And just feeling what the situation is like in your wrists. Maybe only making tiny movements. They're very sore, very tight. We'll come back to stillness in the center. And we'll start to turn our fingers out to the edges of your mat. And we're just going to shift back and forth. Bringing your shoulders over to one set of fingertips. And then to the other. And keeping a little tiny bend here in your elbows so you're not fully locking them out. And then we'll start to turn our fingers around so they face back toward us. Externally rotating them towards the outside. Your wrists are facing forwards now and you might find that you lean a little bit more weight back into your heels. We're going to push the wrists forward and try to keep the knuckles grounded down in your mat. So fingers still spread apart from each other. Palms pressing down. And this could just be the tiniest little movement. Notice how you feel, avoiding any pain. But you should feel a nice stretch. And we'll draw back through center, turning your hands around so the fingers face forward. And then we'll flip the palms so the backs of the hands come down to the mat. And keeping the backs of the hands pressing down, we'll start to curl the fingers into little fists. Yeah, and they might not make it all the way there. And they say that the harder this is to do, the more you need to do it, the more frequently you need to do it. So try to curl your fists in as tight as you can. Bringing the thumbs in there too. And 
And then we'll release the fingers. Flip the hands back over. We'll take them up like little tents. Pressing finger pads down into the mat. And then we'll just start to snap the fingers together. A couple times here. And then we'll shake out the hands if you need to. And then we'll come to sit back on our heels. And you can also come to a cross-legged seated position if this doesn't work out for your knees, sitting up on your heels like this. We'll stretch one arm out in front of you, palm facing forward, wrist toward the sky. We'll try to spread the fingers wide, keeping them engaged, and we'll draw back on the fingers, pressing the wrist away from you. Breathing in and out. And then we'll just bring that arm across your body, starting to work into the back of the shoulder, drawing the arm back in towards you. And then we'll lower that arm, extending the opposite arm out in front of you, fingers facing down, We'll just use the other hand to draw the fingers back in towards your body. And press the bottom of the palm away. And we'll cross the arm, bringing it across your chest. Taking care to leave the elbow a little below your shoulder. So your arms staying in line with your shoulder a little bit lower. And just give a gentle squeeze, bringing that arm back in towards your chest. And lower both arms down by your sides. And take them both to reach out and up overhead, inhaling, reach high. Bring the palms together to touch. We'll exhale through heart center. We'll sweep them around and up once more. Inhaling high. Exhaling them down into your heart. This time as we inhale, we'll reach the arms high. And then we'll start to take a little bend over towards your right side. And try to bring your gaze up underneath your armpit, keeping that shoulder plugged in and starting to draw your left shoulder back. And we'll take one more inhale and exhale here. And we'll reach both arms up and over. And we'll take our bend over to the other side. Drawing the right shoulder back, gazing up underneath your armpit, thinking about reaching up and out, lengthening through your spine instead of just crunching down into your left side. And we'll come back to your center. We'll start to walk the hands forward on your mat, just folding over your knees or your shins if you're cross-legged. We'll take one more inhale here into the back body. And on your exhale, we'll walk the hands back up towards center. Coming back up to a seat. And we'll make our way back onto all fours. Resetting wrists under shoulders, knees underneath your hips. And we'll take a couple of rounds of cat and cow pose here. Tucking your toes under, leaving them untucked. We'll inhale to drop the belly down. Lift the gaze up, draw your shoulder blades back towards your tailbone. And on our exhale, we'll round the back, tucking chin in towards the chest, shifting your tailbone down towards the mat. And we'll alternate a few more times back and forth between our cow pose, breathing in, 
Our cat pose, squeezing the breath out. We'll take that a few more times, adding in any sways of your hips or shifting your neck from side to side. Anything that feels good on your spine, making it a little more organic in your movement. And we'll come back to a neutral spine. We're going to slide the right knee forward up so it comes to the middle of your hands. And then we're going to slide the left knee right up behind it, setting up for Gomukhasana. You might find that you like to have a cushion or a block underneath your sits bones here. It can even be a really high pillow if you have tighter knees or hips. We'll bring the feet wider all the way to the edges of your mat, and then you're going to sit down right in between your feet. Working to stack one knee right over the other and sitting your spine up tall, grounding down through both sits bones on something. So from here in our Gomukhasana, sitting up straight, keeping your feet wide and your knees stacked, we'll start to walk the fingertips forward. You might find that you don't need to go very far to keep a straight spine and keep the sits bones rooted down into the ground. So start to walk forward until you feel an opening in the outsides of your hips or until your hips start to lift up off the mat. And you can lengthen through your upper body, using it, your chest to press down your knees. You might be really open in your hips and be able to walk your arms all the way forward. And using your knee to block off your throat chakra, so tucking your chin over your top knee. And taking long, smooth, slow inhales and exhales. And take another deep breath in on this side. As you exhale, we'll walk the hands back through center. And then we'll unwind the knees, bringing the feet out in front of you as wide as your mat. We'll just windshield wiper the knees back and forth from side to side a couple times. And then we'll cross at the ankles or make your way back to all fours. And from our tabletop position, we'll slide the left knee forward this time, right up in between your hands. Right knee comes behind it. We'll spread the feet wide. Reset your cushion if you have one. And we'll set the hips back in between the feet. We'll come into Gomukhasana on the opposite side, sitting up straight, grounding through your sits bones. And then you're welcome to just stay here if you already feel a hip opening. Or we'll start to walk the fingertips forward, keeping the spine as straight as we can. And walking them out to the front of your mat, keeping the sits bones grounded, pausing along the way to reconnect to your breath. And perhaps making your way all the way out so you can round your chin over your top knee. Connecting into yourself. And we'll draw another breath into the back of the body. Slowly releasing your exhale. And then we'll start to fingertip our way back up to a seat. We'll bring the hands back behind us to unwind the legs. Really slowly letting them re-engage. And then we'll windshield wiper the knees from side to side.
And then we'll come to bring our legs to cross. Or you can be seated up on your shins here if that feels better for you. We'll bring our right ear over to the right shoulder, starting to stretch into the sides of the neck. And we'll start to bring our left fingertips over to the left side, pressing the finger pads down. And if this is too intense, you can release the hand, just let it drape down by your side. And we'll start to look down towards our right knee. And then we'll bring our gaze up towards the sky. Moving really slowly here, listening to what your body tells you. And we'll shift the gaze back down. And we'll start to roll our chin in towards our chest. And we'll release the left hand back to your knee. Left ear comes over to your left shoulder. My earring just fell off onto my foot. And then we'll stretch the right fingertips over to the right side. Doing a stretch in the right side of the neck this time. And we'll bring our gaze down towards your left knee. And then up towards the sky. And bring your gaze back down. And let your right hand find your knee again. And we'll just take these little half circles back and forth from shoulder to shoulder. And staying in any areas that feel extra nice. And if you're really open in your neck and you're looking for a little bit more, you can start to make it into a full circle. And we'll take that around a few times. And then switch it up to go the opposite way. And then once your chin makes its way back down into your chest, we'll start to lift back up through center. From your cross-legged seat, we'll extend the right leg out to the right side. Your left foot will come down to your right inner thigh. We'll pull any flesh out of the way of your sits bones. And then start to rotate so your belly button comes right over your thigh. We'll reach the arms up overhead. And we'll start to fold forward towards our right foot. And you may find that you just grab onto the shin here. Or you can grab hold of the bottom of the foot. Or just let your arms hang down by your sides. And we'll think about drawing forward, bringing the heart towards the top of your foot rather than rounding into your low back. And keeping your chest facing towards your foot, foot is flexed, stretching into the back of your hamstring. And using your breath, to lead with your belly folding over your right thigh. We'll take another inhale on this side. Start to make our way back through center. And we'll switch out the legs, bringing the left foot out straight. And the right foot comes into your inner thigh. We'll shift. Belly button over thigh, pulling, sits, pulling flesh out of the way of your sits bones. And then start to fold over your extended leg. Reaching out for whatever you can grab onto, whatever is within your reach. And 
I'm thinking about drawing your sits bones back towards the back of your mat. And take one more inhale here. On our exhale, we'll walk our way up through center. We'll bring the bottoms of the feet together and the knees wide. And then walk your feet as close in towards your pelvic area as you can. We'll open the feet up like you're reading a book. And then start to lengthen your spine, root right down to your sits bones. And we'll just draw the heart forward. Trying to lead with a flat back. You can even use your elbows to press your knees away from you. And if this is feeling really good, you're welcome to stay here. Or you can start to round the spine, bringing the forehead down towards your feet. And letting the upper back round in. Chin tucking down and towards your chest. And take another breath in here, feeling it fill up in between your shoulder blades. And then on your exhale, we'll start to unwind, coming back up to our seat. We'll bring the hands down to close up the knees like we're closing up our book. Then you'll grab hold of the backs of your hamstrings and make your way down onto your back. We'll draw the knees up into our chest. And we'll keep hold of the right knee as we extend the left leg straight. We'll come into a recline twist, crossing your knee over to the other side of your body. We'll extend your arms out wide like a T, or if you're too close to the wall like me, take cactus arms. And then your gaze will look away from your knee. And we'll come back to our really deep inhales here. Feel both shoulder blades rooting down into your mat. And if when you turn over, you find that there's a lot of space here between your knee and the floor, you can always bring a blanket or a pillow or a block underneath that knee. And we'll start to make our way up through center, hugging your left knee back up to meet the right. And then we'll extend, switching out the legs. And we'll take our left knee across to our other side. Taking your arms out wide, gazing over your opposite shoulder. baby pose here, reaching in between your knees, taking the insides or outsides of the feet, knees and towards your armpits. We'll rock from side to side. We'll start to extend into our Shavasana, lengthening your legs down to the bottom corners of your mat, arms come out to the side with your palms facing up. Or, since I have this convenient wall here so close to me, if you also have a wall, you might consider taking your legs up the wall. So you scoot one hip really close to the wall, start to come down onto your back, and then we'll rotate so your hips face the wall. 
and you bring your legs right up. So you want your sacrum to be grounded down on the floor, legs going up the wall. Now we'll close our eyes, settling down into your final resting pose. Whether it's with legs up the wall or in your Shavasana, letting your full body relax. Please take your time coming out of your Shavasana. Stay here as long as you want, as long as you need. Hopefully we've got you feeling loose and limber like Don Draper in California. If not, feel free to watch this video as many times as you like. And if you do like it, please like it or leave your comments or suggestions for videos that you'd like to see. Thank you so much for watching. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.